In this dystopian world, the military has been equipped with a neuron implant that provides them with cool VR-like features for their brain. They hunt the vicious monsters through it, but soon find out that this implant has altered their senses and has made them the real monsters. While this went from cool to creepy real fast, let's find out how that happened. The episode begins with a soldier named Stripe dreaming about a beautiful woman. He wakes up to his fellow soldier Raymond, who wakes him up rather rudely. We learn that Stripe is a new soldier, and today they are set to go on a mission to investigate an infestation of roaches in a village nearby. Roaches are supposedly some kind of monster that are not welcomed in the society, as they are said to be vicious and hunt innocent people. Soon, the team arrives at the village that has just been robbed by some of the roaches. The scared villagers explain the situation in different languages which the soldiers do not understand. The group's commander, Medina, then turns on a translator in order to understand the language as she interrogates the villagers. They learn that the roaches robbed them and escaped in the direction of the residence of a guy named Parn Heidecker. It is said that Parn is a religious misanthropist who, according to the villagers, is mentally ill. They claim that Parn lets the roaches enter his land and even provides food for them. Stripe also speaks with the villagers and promises to keep them safe. The soldiers suspect that Parn is helping the roaches, so they leave for his house to interrogate him. During the ride, we learn that each soldier in the military has a neural implant called MASS, which has been implanted in their brain to help them get the data through AR and help them strategize their operations. They get to Parn's large house and plan the operation to raid the place using their holographic maps and displays with the help of Mass. The important characters, Medina, Stripe, Raymond, and Leonard, are all in charge of talking to Parn and investigating the main house, while the other soldiers are instructed to investigate the nearby related places that Parn owns. They knock on the door and learn that Parn is all alone. They demand to be let in and inspect his home. Parn looks a little scared as he lets them in. Leonard and Medina stay to interrogate the man while Raymond and Stripe rush upstairs to look around. During the interrogation, Medina notices the religious symbols in the house and realizes that Parn seems to be looking out for the roaches as his religious belief is that all living species must be protected. She tries to change his belief by arguing that the roaches have some kind of sickness in their blood which makes them inhuman as they don't care about human ideas or humanity. She presses on the fact that roaches are required to be killed for the sake of human survival. While investigating the rooms upstairs, Stripe and Raymond come across a hidden room and decide to split up. Inside, Stripe notices several shadows behind a blanket and gets closer to lift the blanket. Behind it, he finds three horrifying roaches who look like Voldemort's grandkids or the one who shouldn't be named. They appear to have flat noses, sharp teeth, and scary eyes. One of the roaches points to a weird device with green lights on his hands. Stripe shoots one of them and starts to fight with another. The roach tries to bite Stripe, so he takes out his knife and ends the creature. As the silence follows, Stripe examines the device with green light, which seems to cause strain to his eyes. While Raymond is rushing to help him, she gets thrown off by another roach who manages to escape them. Downstairs, Parn tries to attack Medina, but they manage to put him down and arrest him. Medina orders to set the entire compound on fire before they leave, and with the fire, the device gets burned as well. The next day, we see Raymond practicing at shooting the targets so that she doesn't let any more roaches escape like yesterday. She is also evidently jealous of Stripe for killing two roaches on his first day. Stripe arrives and starts practicing as well, but he fails to shoot the target as his implant seems to glitch as he hears a high-pitched tone. Raymond asks him about this, but he insists that he is fine. During the exercise session, this continues to happen as Stripe fails to perform the activities. When Medina notices this, she orders him to report to the sick bay so they could get to the root of this issue. Stripe follows the orders and gets checked out at the hospital, where the doctor runs a diagnosis on him to test if the implants are working correctly, but there seems to be no error. 
Afterwards, Stripe asks the doctor about the green-lighted device from the mission. The doctor is not able to understand him and refers him to talk to Arquette. Arquette is a psychologist who talks to Stripe and then suspects that Stripe might be having problems because of his first mission where he killed two roaches and claims that after a good rest of a few days, Stripe will be all well again. Before Stripe leaves, Arquette promises him an excellent sleep tonight by programming something special for his dreams. But the dream abruptly ends as the glitch appears again, forcing Stripe to wake up, and he notices that everyone is sleeping peacefully. The next day, Stripe, Medina, and Raymond go to help the same villagers with the food and supplies. Medina informs the group that some information about the roach's whereabouts was extracted from Parn. So they head out to the given location to end all the roaches. They arrived at the abandoned place and planned the mission with the help of a drone and mass. Stripe's implant glitches again and he starts to smell grass. Kind of weird. He explains this to Raymond, who couldn't care less. Just then, they are attacked with several shots firing at them. Medina ends up getting struck in the head and she is no more. During the chaos, Raymond manages to use the drone to locate the shooters inside the building and they find out that their roaches are shooting at them with a stolen rifle. Stripe is distressed, but Raymond continues to make her way inside the building. Stripe still manages to follow her while feeling dizzy and confused as they cover for each other. Inside, they find a freelancing workshop that seems to be planning to create the green device from earlier. Stripe surprisingly finds a normal-looking woman in one of the rooms who is scared of getting hurt. Stripe tells her to get out of there, promising not to hurt her. But as she gets out, she gets shot by Raymond. Stripe is shocked and asks her why she killed a civilian, but Raymond just ignores him and continues the mission, putting down one roach after another. But surprisingly, the roaches Raymond kills look like normal humans to Stripe. Raymond is about to kill a petrified mother and son, but Stripe stops her and knocks her unconscious while getting shot. After managing to get back on his feet, he helps the two escape from there. While now awake, Raymond watches them get into the military vehicle and leave. While bleeding out, he manages to drive them into the woods before coming to a halt as he falls unconscious. She drags him into a cave and treats his wounds. After he wakes up, the woman introduces herself as Katarina and her son as Alec. Stripe then learns a shocking truth from her. She reveals that the roaches that are being hunted by the military are just normal humans. The soldiers see them as monsters because of the implants that alter their senses. The reason is that the higher class people look down on them as disease-ridden, poor, and unintelligent, deeming them as roaches. The green light device was made by one of her friends to mess with the implant so that the soldier would be able to see them as real humans. They are the victims of a genocide which is justified as genetic cleansing. Hmm, now where in history have I heard this before? Stripe asks why the villagers hate them even though they don't have any implants. Katarina tells him that even though they can see them as humans, they still deem them as inferiors due to the whole propaganda. She informs him that 10 years ago, the government ran DNA checks all over the world. With the result being, people with genetic susceptibility to illnesses were categorized as roaches. All this was a huge campaign supported by the internet and the media and had a huge impact on how the world changed. During their conversation, Raymond manages to track them down and two roaches are finished, traumatizing Stripe even more. Raymond demands an explanation from Stripe, but he is too shocked to answer her. This irritates her even more and she knocks him out. Stripe wakes up, held in a room where Arquette visits him and apologizes for failing to notice the glitch with his implants. He explains that the green-lighted device that he found is reverse-engineered by the roaches using some of the military drone parts. The light in the device transmits a code, which is like a virus that burrows into the person's implants while trying to shut it down. Stripe insists that the roaches look just like him, but Arquette says that the roaches are dangerous as they take advantage of human beings' natural empathy. 
He gives the example of World War II, where most of the soldiers refused to pull the trigger or intentionally missed the targets, and only 15 to 20 percent of them actually pulled the trigger. He adds that the war would have been over way earlier if they had grown some orbs and did their job. Because of this, the officials tried to find a solution around humans' natural empathy and created mass, which alters all such senses like smell or sound so that they can pull the damn trigger without hesitation or remorse. He proceeds to show a video of Stripe where he consented to memory and sense alteration of mass. After learning that the implants erased all his previous memories, Stripe gets enraged and attacks Arquette, but gets implanted instead. This blinds Stripe as Arquette offers him two choices. He can either allow the military to reset the implant by erasing all his memories or choose to be incarcerated. Stripe first chooses to be incarcerated, but Arquette lets him see the first mission in his mind, but now with no filters, where he ruthlessly killed two roaches and learns that the one who escaped that day was Katarina. This traumatizes Stripe to the depth, and he decides to wipe out all the memories until now. The real roaches always win. The episode ends as we see Stripe in an officer uniform as he leaves his base and approaches a house. He cries as he watches the girl from his dreams walk towards him with a smile. Well, this was another bleak episode, but it does show one possible version of our future. We want to know what you think of this one. Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on the next video or the playlist on the screen. As always, thanks for watching.